Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to talk about object pren pren. Um, I was explaining a weird bit of code on stream the other day, and someone was like, "What? Why? Why are you calling object there? What is going on?" Um, so let me explain that. Okay, so let me show you an example of similar code to what I was talking about on stream. Um, I had a module level constant that I named missing and assigned it object pren pren. Uh, and then the way that I used it later was some function that took in a dictionary and I wanted some value and I did dict.get uh, some key and I gave a default value of missing. And then I uh, I wanted to you know retrieve the value if it was there, otherwise uh, this missing value would be there. And I would say if value is missing, then print, uh, you know, Key was not supplied, uh, or no, K, K was not supplied. Uh, we should probably put this in quotes or something. Otherwise, print the value was value. Okay, so what I was doing here is I was making a kind of a, a poor man's singleton here uh, to represent an object that would be entirely unique on the process, but not something that a user would pass in. Um, and so what I used here is, or what I abused here is that object is itself a unique, or a construction of object, the default base class of all classes in Python 3. Um, the default construction of this just gives you a blank object, uh, and that object is entirely unique for that process. Now, if I started another process, I might get another object that is actually the same as that or different than that based on uh, you know process initialization. Um, but you know just calling you know x equals object, you get some value here. Object 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 a little bit weird. Uh, and if you wanted to make another one, you could make another one like this. Um, and you can see I get two different ever so slightly different memory addresses here. So this is twenty and this is thirty. So I guess it took you know I guess it's not ten bytes, but um, Whatever this in the hexadecimal, <laughs> 160 bytes. Uh, sys dot get size of x. Uh, 16. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> 16, not 160. What am I saying? Uh, but anyway. Um, so this allows you to create a an easy singleton object. And what I wanted to differentiate here, so I could have just left out missing, and then this would be different. Um, there's like. Well, let me just show you it working first. Uh, t.py, uh, if we call func with no key, you'll see that k was not supplied. If we specify k but it's none, we also, it'll say like the value was none. Also, if we specify it with the empty string, you'll see that, oh, I probably should have done bang r here. Uh, that way, k empty string. That way we see that it's the empty string here. Um, and of course, if we give it some actual value, we get a, uh, an actual value out here. And so the reason that I made this special object and assigned it to missing and, and made sure that this was something that my users would never pass in. So, you know, they, they, they don't know about this object. I would probably also underscore prefix it just to be, you know, super safe here. Um, the reason that I did this and, and didn't do something that looks like this, um, is it's possible that somebody passes in a dictionary that has a value of none here. And I want to be able to differentiate between the key is present but it's none and the key is not present at all. Um, so you can see here, I've actually tricked this, this buggy version of this function to say that this key was not supplied. Um, and so that's kind of a little trick here. Now, uh, I often see this be a little bit tricky with type checkers because type checkers don't quite know what's going on with this particular pattern here. Um, but there's a there's a cheeky way to get around this to is and and that's to use enums, um, and to make a enum that only has one value. Uh, actually, missing enum can just be status enum dot enum status and missing, and then we can say should probably underscore prefix this as well and say missing equals status dot missing um, and then you can use this as a type in your uh, with your type checker and it'll understand this pattern a little bit better um, this is essentially the same idea as object print print 
of course, I'm using an enum as the singleton here instead of my, you know, handcrafted singleton there. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's this pattern. That's why I did object print print. Also a way to do this that makes type checkers a little bit happier. Um, I actually use this pattern, this exact pattern in pre-commit. So if you check out, let's see, what file is that in? Uh, not pre-commit CI, pre-commit, it's in env context. Yeah, of course here it's unset instead of, um, instead of missing, but a uh, similar thing. And I have this value object, which is either a string, an unset or a substitution variable, um, which itself is either a string or a variable. Anyway, it's, it's, it's complicated. Um, but I use the same enum pattern to make the type checker happy. Uh, but anyway, that's object print print and why I used it to make a singleton. Um, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.